name is Chris Mackenberg. I'm director of hazardous materials for CSX. And today I'm here to talk about GIS and how CSX utilizes GIS with our day-to-day -day operations and with our incident management. Now CSX is a rail network that covers 23 states, District of Columbia, and two small Canadian provinces. So our, our network is a very extensive rail network. Now, early in the 1990s, GIS came into fold with the Real Properties Division to develop a mapping system for all of our assets within that 23 state network. It didn't really come into full effect until 2009 where GIS was needed for positive train control or PTC under new regulations imposed on railroads. So throughout that process from the early 90s through 2009 and the introduction of PTC and up to present, uh, Enterprise GIS here at CSX has developed an extensive mapping network uh, through a program called Map CSX. Every mile of rail has been mapped uh, in GIS, and so and every asset has been mapped within our GIS gal mapping gallery. Um, GIS provides several different services throughout the entire company. Uh, these services include field services, where they have field managers uh, located throughout our network. They manage our GIS database. Uh, they also manage our PTC, positive train control, subdivision files. So within that 23 uh, state network, uh, 21,000 miles of railroad, you know, every piece of that railroad is actually assigned a particular subdivision and so PTC is broken down into those subdivision files. Every mile of uh, this rail has been mapped to where on our locomotive simulators, GIS has integrated those maps into our locomotive simulators. Um, and then also our Enterprise GIS group is also doing application development. So most people don't think about uh, GIS in an industry level when dealing with emergency management. We're kind of a unique uh, industry where um, GIS plays a major role in our emergency management. Uh, one of the true tests of GIS and our GIS team was during Hurricane Florence, uh, where we challenged our GIS team to basically give uh, operational support in a way that they've never given operational support. Um, you know, GIS groups in most companies are kind of set off into a corner and never utilized to their fullest potential. Where here at CSX, we saw that potential and saw a great opportunity to help manage uh, large scale incidents. So basically, what did GIS provide operational support during Hurricane Florence? Well, they gave us the ability to have real time field observations. Uh, you know, you're here at headquarters, you know, most of the time we're looking at emails and text messages and, you know, having phone calls when available and when service is available. What GIS did, they took us to that next level of incident management, not just response, but management. Um, they provided real time information to our hurricane room here in Jacksonville. And that real time information gave us the ability to manage all of the response assets uh, throughout our network. You can imagine with a hurricane the size of Hurricane Florence, you're dealing not just with one small location, but you're dealing with an expansive multi-state response and recovery. Uh, that, that ends up lasting not only just multiple days, but into weeks and possibly months to get our infrastructure repaired back to or better than it was before that storm. Uh, they were able to mobilize field teams to the affected areas to be able to drive that information back to headquarters. Um, and, and it was very critical that they had a seat at the table in the hurricane room during the storm so that as questions came from senior management, 
asking, you know, what about this particular area? Can we get pictures of this particular area? Where are these assets located? They were able to drive that information into a very easily read uh, dashboard uh, so that everyone can make informed, fact-based decisions. And they did it very quickly. Uh, their time frame was about a week um, to be able to go from basically zero to 100 miles an hour. And our team did a phenomenal job doing that. So Hurricane Florence had a five-day schedule from basically start until they were prepared for the storm. So basically Monday they were given that challenge. You know, here's what we need. We need to be able to map all of our assets. We need to be able to feed photos back to headquarters. We need to be able you know, to make sure that we can make these fact-based uh, fact decisions. So Tuesday, they, you know, they took that challenge. They had an all-hands meeting, and they started testing the web app. So they had actually developed a web app, started pushing data through that web app in order to ensure that they were getting good information back in a timely manner. Uh, Wednesday, they went through the testing of the collector app. So for the folks out in the field, uh, what we call our roadmasters who are in charge of the, the railroad track base, um, our manager of train operations who manage the movement of the trains. So they, they, they tested this collector app. Uh, Thursday, they had field teams out there testing. And Friday, they were ready to go, sitting at the hurricane room table, prepared for the storm. So as you can see here, the map that they had created for the field team gives a lot of information and gives a lot of information that's easy to read. And that's the beauty of GIS to an operations uh, manager. The you know, operation manager, they want to read it, they want to see it, um, they want to be able to, to, to be able to communicate that information very easily. And that's what our GIS team did in, in our hurricane response for Florence on Map CSX. So what you see here are assets and incidents um, throughout a piece, several pieces of rail. So it made it very easy where they could click on an icon. This is information that's being uploaded from the field, trees down. And with those trees down, there's a picture. You know, so it gives a good visual to the person sitting in the chair at HQ, the difficulty that that field person is having to go through to clear those trees. Uh, washouts, you know, and when you'll see in further pictures in the presentation, um, some of the things that we look for in a washout where someone's standing there just talking about it on the phone, it really doesn't tell the whole story of how bad that washout is. And so that also allows folks in, in headquarters to be able to look at that washout and go, this is exactly what you're gonna need asset wise in order to to bring that asset back that that track back to operational conditions um so a lot of information on this map and this is what the dashboard looks like from that map so very easy to read tells us where our assets are tells us what those assets are uh tells us what our issues are and where those issues are which then allows us to figure out how do we move materials in there to make the repairs, to get our network back up and running. Um, yeah, every, every dashboard is designed differently. This is one that makes a lot of sense to us because it gives us our critical information that we need on the railroad side for to start the recovery process. Um, you know, it tells us about our flooding. You know, we have four locations here, this particular incident during this particular storm that had flooding washouts, trees down, block crossings. It tells us where our generators are. Uh, what a lot of people don't realize, uh, you know, when we have a hurricane response, part of that response and recovery, we'll have several hundred generators through multiple states um, operating railroad crossings. And to be able to track each one of those assets becomes critical uh, for our recovery. So some of the other things that GIS services provides CSX operations. So we have ready-made maps. Uh, it becomes very critical, especially when you're trying to plan rerouting of, of, of trains during an incident, after an incident, even before an incident. Um, field asset surveys. 
So the GIS goes out and they'll actually do surveys on our signal systems, our switches, our rail yards. LIDAR has become a new tool that we've used here in the, in the, recent, uh, in the recent past. Um, LIDAR provides us a lot of elevation readings. So now we are able to pre-plan where flooding may occur. Our locomotive simulators. Uh, so we've got a process of where our locomotive engineers, um, if they're not able to get onto a locomotive, they can actually go onto a simulator and drive a train to practice driving trains. Uh, we also do a lot of testing on those locomotive simulators and what GIS provides that locomotive simulator program is real life data. So it's not just playing a video game, they've actually got all the information from their LIDAR, from their GIS servicing, from their drone operations, from their interactive mapping. They've got all this information pumped into a locomotive simulator so that you can get realistic uh, simulations of how trains react to certain territories. Uh, they do a lot of geospatial analysis, interactive mapping. Uh, one of the things that allows them to do all of these items is drones. Uh, we've got an extensive drone operation, not only on the GIS department, which the GIS department introduced drones into the company, but that, that GIS drone operation has now transformed and flowed over to our law enforcement side and our operations folks. Uh, so we've got hundreds of drone operators within the company throughout our entire network to be able to fly drones during an emergency response or during a recovery after a storm. Uh, Location-based services. So we know where all of our assets are as far as locomotives um, or any other equipment that have GIS locators on them. Our PTC data uh, it's, it's become very critical to ensure that positive train control uh, works properly. And then we also have digital timetables, which the rail crews uh, carry with them. And it's kind of a roadmap for them to let them know different speeds in a territory and, and other uh, operational concerns that they have to be aware of. So GIS brought in the CSX network into what's called Map CSX. And basically this is a photo of our Map CSX program and our network. So you can see it's like a spider web of railroad tracks that GIS has put together into a very comprehensive mapping system with several different layers within that mapping system. So you can imagine with 21,000 route miles of track, there's a lot to keep up with. Uh, GIS does a phenomenal job within our company in drawing those maps for us and being able to allow us to use those maps in a very interactive manner. Um, 270 different subdivisions, you know, which 133 actually have PTC uh, on those subdivisions. You know, you're looking at over 100,000 assets tracked in the PTC programming that GIS has developed and over 200,000 assets on the entire network. And this is where on the industry level side, the corporate level side, GIS plays a major role in asset utilization and asset preservation, uh, especially during you know, an emergency response a large scale incident such as a hurricane that may have you know, multiple weeks of recovery to, to manage. Uh, and then our GIS team also has 12 field managers out throughout the network uh, able to uh, bring back more information back to headquarters through their GIS services. So when you look at just the basics of GIS, Map CSX, and the real estate side of, of the mapping system and how GIS is utilized in the real estate side of CSX, what you see here is on the Map CSX several different layers that GIS has developed so that um, we can look at everything from a yard boundary to an engineering milepost, a CSX track, non-CSX track. So that can become very critical when you're looking at an incident that's happened or you're doing a recovery and you're in your recovery stage of what belongs to your corporation 
and what belongs to a city or a county uh, so that we make sure that we're putting the right resources and assets from the right uh, entity and making sure that we're using those properly. So GIS plays a major role in making sure that we're staying on, on our property, other folks are staying on their property, and when we do have to come together, we understand and have clear expectations of, of who needs to do what and where. So basically this just gives us a little bit of information here, it tells us the parcel, the city, uh, very basic information. And then you come over to the PC, PTC asset validation. So, you know, when we're looking at road crossings, uh, whether they're open or closed, um, different base layers. So we've got our CSX network here. And then we also have our track wayside assets. And we can drill down to see where different assets for the track system are located. And again, there's several different ways of, of doing that, but these are some of the assets that we keep track of, you know, your signal systems, your track, um, you know, and different things of that nature. So one of the things over the past several years that we've seen an increase is, is the use of drones. And GIS introduced this to, the, to our company several years ago. A lot of people didn't, uh, they just didn't accept it for a while, and, and now they really see the the use of the drones as a an incredible tool for multiple um, multiple applications. You know, one application is for mapping, and you can fly that drone, put it on autopilot, and let it do its thing and fly and map out every single inch in a rail yard. Um, and that's that's perfect for pre-incident planning, and then after incident recovery because during the incident recovery, now you have photos and mapping of what things should be looking like. And when you go out to the field, you can then help you identify issues and problems that you may not have realized if you're not familiar with that rail yard. One of the other things that we use drones for now is the operational uh, testing for our employees. And it allows us to show them when they're doing things right and when they're doing things wrong versus just telling them that they did something right or did something wrong. And this allows them to learn from their mistakes. Our police department uses uh, drones extensively for accident investigation at road crossings, uh, security purposes, uh, at some of our, our more uh, populated terminals and busy terminals with high value shipments. So, so bringing drones into your GIS fold is a critical tool to pre-planning and then incident recovery. So again, we also use drones for economic development and real estate. But one of the more unique items that we use drones for is during incident response. And as you can see here, a picture tells a thousand words uh, trying to explain what you're seeing down in Jacksonville, you know, while you're sitting up in a hurricane ravaged storm area. Uh, what this allows us to do with our, with our mapping system and our dashboards that our GIS group has developed is to send that photo back and that drone footage back to headquarters to say, okay, this is what I need, this is why I need it, and here's the complications that we are seeing. What this also allows us to do is record these incidents so that in future planning, we can say, just like in this top picture on the left-hand side, we know we're gonna have flooding in this low area. Um, we've used LIDAR, and we'll talk about that here uh, in the next couple of slides, uh, to find those low-lying areas. But this is what it looks like in real life when we have flooding of a, of a river nearby. And so what that does is allows us that once we've gone through the recovery process, now we know to pre-plan around that area. We know that we're going to need to stage you know, stone, rail, cross ties, other, other resources to get that asset back up and running. Uh, when you look at the next picture over on the right hand, top right hand side, you know, that's a good picture of a washout. Uh, basically what that is telling us, I can sit there and say, I need this much rail 
brought in for this much tithes. I need to put a culvert there. And so that's going to help us with that recovery. But again, what that's also going to help us with is marking that on the GIS mapping system to say we've got, we're going to have a problem here, area here, moving forward during the next storm you know, or the next storm after that. So this allows us, again, to continue that pre-planning during that recovery process so that when we have that storm come through there again, which we know on the East Coast, you know, with all the hurricanes, now, we, now we've got a good idea of where we need to be staging and being prepped and ready to go in order to get that resource and that asset back up and running. When you look at the, the last photo down on the bottom right hand side, you know, some of the locations that we travel through are heavily forested. And so it becomes safety issues to put crews out there before we start uh, clearing those areas. So to be able to fly a drone over where we have trains located or be able to fly a drone over a certain section of track before we take a train through that area, that gives us a good idea of the resources we need to bring in in order to remove all that tree, all those trees and debris uh, for that recovery process. So LIDO, let's talk a little bit about LIDO. It's a fairly new technology for us um, that we've started using here in the more recent years and it has become a tremendous resource and asset for us. Um, what you see here are different elevations that the LIDAR uh, allows us to, to see um, while the train and equipment is traveling through that area, the inspection cars are traveling through that area. And what, what does that tell us? Well, it basically tells us where we may have issues uh, during storms or during other uh, weather related incidents. So kind of forward looking, um, you know, what, what is CSX doing with GIS for our recovery and incident management and incident response? Well, we're doing a lot of drone surveying. Uh, that drone surveying, you know, continuous yard mapping. You know, these rail yards do tend to change from year to year as we move track and roadways throughout, you know, within these terminals. So doing constant yard mapping um, is it critical uh, for us to, to maintain an emergency response posture in those terminals. Mapping accident sites, uh, what that does is, is it helps us during the accident reconstruction to figure out you know, what caused that accident, how we can prevent that accident moving forward. Um, provides imagery instantly from a derailment. And many of you can can truly relate to this. You know, you're getting the call about an incident and you're trying to get as much information as you possibly can. And it, it doesn't matter who you talk to, you'll get a different perspective every single time. And those people can be standing right next to each other looking at the exact same thing. And they're going to give you back a different perspective, different observation. The ability to provide that drone imagery through the dashboard, through our map CSX, through all of our GIS tools that we have here at CSX is absolutely critical to making the right decisions as far as what assets they're gonna need there on the ground to, to manage that incident. Um, public safety, and that's where, you know, that imagery coming back, making those decisions to get the right assets, to do the right response, uh, that's where public safety comes into play. But the CSX Police Department takes it to the next level when they're using drones for uh, doing uh, asset protection. Uh, so in a, in a rail yard that is in a you know, highly urbanized uh, area where we have trucking involved, we have rail cars involved, you know, high, high crime areas, the CSX police use these drones in order to help patrol those areas at times. Um, and they use those drones also for pre-planning, you know, so they can see where some of the weaker points are of security in those locations. Robotics is something new that we're starting to uh, look at um, and trying to utilize for rail car inspections. Uh, so what we're looking at right now and we're utilizing today or actually we call a car wash system where it's kind of a shed that a train will travel through at normal operating speed with several cameras and sensors that actually takes pictures 
of those cars and all the components on those cars and will actually send back messages if they're missing one single bolt underneath that rail car that you know someone can't see doing normal inspections so you know we're trying to take it to the next level uh using gis and using different you know systems camera systems and things of that nature to do our inspections um, asset inspections and tracking such as the lidar um, geospatial audits so you know one of the things that we uh we, we do we can look at a bridge and do a full inspection on a bridge um using you know, you know lidar also using the drones um and then we also look at transportation cross-functional inf informational systems. So basically what that is is a fancy fancy uh, phrase for basically looking at managing critical storm events, you know, our storm desk, um, using cross-functional teams, bringing them in to push different information all into one format so that everyone involved in managing an incident, managing a weather event, or just managing your day-to-day -day operations can can gather that information, see that information, and use that information to make fact-based decisions. So one of the big uh, things that we, we have here at CSX, you know, is the collaboration between our GIS technology group and the operations and emergency management group. Um, you know, we, we really look at the pre-planning side of things, doing a lot of tr cross-functional training with these groups. But also, you know, we take that information and we utilize that information and we don't try to push anybody out and exclude anyone because all of this information coming in is going to help us recover in that recovery stage. You know, this isn't just a one day, most of the time it's not a one day recovery stage. It's usually a multi-week, especially on a, on a, um, a hurricane situation uh, where you're going from state to state and the hurricane not, you know, starts in Florida and goes all the way up through New York and, and beyond. And so we're, we're having to do recovery phase through all of those states and becomes very critical for operations to know and understand the value that GIS provides. And it's also critical that GIS understands the needs for the operations folks in order to ensure that they're having and minimizing their recovery time frame. So um, I thank you for listening to and, and participating with this presentation. Um, if you have any further questions, you'll please feel free to reach out to myself. Um, and I'll be more than happy to discuss any opportunities of cross-functional training with railroads, not only with CSX, but also with any railroad that may be in your area um, throughout the United States. So again, thank you and stay safe.